So when I hauled this book, I asked you guys, my viewers, which picture you would like me to colour in, and the one that was a clear winner that came out on top was Anne Boleyn. I'm not surprised, although no one actually voted for Elizabeth I, which I am surprised at, because she does feature in this book like many other um, queens and consorts. I wanted to talk you through this picture and talk you through why I've coloured it in the way I have. As you can tell, I'm not a professional artist by any stretch of the imagination. I find that colouring really soothes me. Sometimes I feel a bit anxious and colouring in just kind of calms me down. It's a great thing to do when you don't want to read, as if you never want to read, or watch TV or anything. It's a great, uh, it's a great alternative activity. So this picture is a portrait. It's by an anonymous painter, as you can tell um, that Natalie has wrote at the bottom. It is a portrait believed to be Anne Boleyn. And it is probably the most famous portrait of Anne um, in existence. It's the one that you kind of think of when you think of Anne Boleyn. This is the one that springs to mind. It is a very famous one for a very good reason, and I wanted to talk you through it. Now, this portrait itself, the original, is housed at Hever Castle in Kent. I have been there. I have seen the original. It is beautiful. It does not look like this <laughs> because I cannot colour in. Um, I just do it for fun. Uh, it is a lot smaller than you think, actually, the original image. Let me tell you that. It's a lot smaller than you think. I thought it'd be massive, but it isn't. Anyway, the reason why I've chosen to colour this portrait in the way that I have is because I wanted to reflect Anne's story in the colours used. So, as you can see, I've left the background white so that she stands out more. I have done her dress and her hood also in black. Again, subdued colours. And to be honest, to kind of give a sad reflection of her life and her ending of her life. I have done her hair and her eyes in dark brown, although I could have done her hair a bit darker. I should, probably should have gone over that. I've done her skin fairly fair, um, which I probably should have gone over because Anne Boleyn didn't have the fairest of skin, but I probably should have gone over that. But And then her lips, I've done kind of a rosy ready colour. But the thing that I wanted to stand out is two things. Firstly, the rose. The rose is very famous. Uh, of course, we have the Tudor rose. But this rose in particular, this red rose, I wanted to um, signify the colour. Anne Boleyn, at her execution, um, under her uh, overdress, wore red, which is the colour of martyrdom, um, showing basically a very subtle image that she is innocent. The other thing that I wanted to stand out in this is her jewellery. So we have here uh, the famous B for Berlin necklace, as well as lots of other jewels, which I wanted to be as pearls. Uh, pearls, of course, very synonymous with her daughter, Elizabeth I, to show her virginity. But in this, I wanted to show and reflect Anne's virtue um, and, uh, her innocence in a way. I'm not saying that Anne Boleyn was innocent of all crimes um, because Anne Boleyn did do wrong and Anne Boleyn herself admits she did do wrong um, but she didn't deserve the uh, end that she was faced with and therefore that's what I wanted to reflect in this picture. <laughs> 